spent my life studying bats. In fact, I founded Bat Conservation International. Now, why would anybody in his right mind found an organization for animals that most people believe are vampires and rabid to boot? Well, the truth is that less than 1% of all the world's bat species are vampires. They're only found in one small part of the world. And in fact, virtually everything people think they know about vampires is untrue. They do cause some problems for the cattle industry. And once in a while when somebody's sleeping out exposed in the open in the New World tropics at night, they might actually get bitten by a vampire. But there are no vampires in the rest of the world, at least no bat vampires. And this whole idea that bats are dangerous, that they'll give us rabies or some other disease is, is really put to rest right here in Austin. At our Congress Avenue Bridge, we have more than a million and a half bats that have lived there every summer for the last 20 years. And in all that time, not one human has been attacked or harmed by a single bat. And yet every night during the summer, there are literally thousands of people down there within a few feet of all those bats watching them. Certainly, if bats were something dangerous, the people of Austin would know about today. The reality is those bats from that one bridge eat approximately 30,000 pounds of insects a night and bring in over 8 million tourist dollars a summer just here in Austin. Now, if we look at bats worldwide, there are more than 1,100 species of bats. They're found everywhere but in the most extreme desert and polar regions. They come in incredible diversity. They're giants with six-foot wingspans. They're tiny little bumblebee bats that weigh a third less than a penny. There are bats that are bright orange. There are bats that are snow white with black spots. There are black bats. There are all kinds of bats. Some of them with six-foot wingspans, some of them with wingspans a few inches. But the one thing I can tell you is that bats in general are extremely important, not only extremely important, but they're vital to the health of whole ecosystems and human economies. For example, worldwide, 70% of bat species feed on insects, and they're primary predators of pests, vast numbers of pests, that cost foresters and farmers of America alone billions of dollars annually. Just to take a few examples, right here in Texas, the Mexican free-tailed bats that live under the Congress Avenue Bridge are an extreme boon to our, not just our local economy through the Congress Avenue Bridge and tourism, but to farmers of Texas. Our bats, just those that we protect in Bracken Cave alone, and let me explain that Bracken Cave is home of the world's largest bat colony, the largest concentration of living warm-blooded animals, 20 million bats, 270 tons of bats. Those bats, each summer night, consume an average of 200 tons of insects. That's almost beyond anything we can comprehend. During certain times of the year, when some of our most costly crop pests migrate into the United States from Mexico, our bats are intercepting them thousands of feet above ground before they even can arrive. For example, the corn earworm moth that migrates into Texas and then all the way on up through to Canada every summer costs American farmers about a billion dollars a year. Our bats, just from Bracken Cave alone, are intercepting literally billions of those moths in a single night. Each female moth is carrying about a thousand eggs. That means that if one bat eats only a small part of its capability, let's say 20 female moths, that's 20,000 eggs not laid. That's more than enough to force a Texas farmer to spray two acres of crop at a very high cost. That's just what one species of bat is doing here in Texas. If we want to look broader to the national picture, we can look at, let's say, the big brown bat, one of our most widespread species. It doesn't form huge colonies like free-tailed bats, so we don't notice them as much. But very few Americans live very far from the nearest big brown bat. A study in Illinois showed that just one colony of these bats colony of about 150, that's a number that could easily live in a backyard bat house, can consume enough cucumber beetles 
in a single summer to prevent 33 million eggs laid on corn crops that would otherwise become corn rootworms, which is another billion dollar American pest. Take the little brown bat, again, a very widespread bat throughout the northern half of America. Just one little brown bat can catch 1,200 mosquito-sized insects in a single hour. Just imagine the impact of whole colonies of these bats. And yet bats are out there doing these things every night, every summer. They may be out of mind and out of sight, but they're not out of relevance. And yet these bats are extremely vulnerable to extinction. A single little brown bat, you know, it, it doesn't reproduce like mice. Each mother produces just one baby a year, and that's typical of bats. And so they have very slow reproductive rates, but their lifespans are traditionally more like those of primitive humans. We have known records of bats that lived up to 39 and a half years in the wild because they're long lifespans, low reproductive rates, and the fact that they aggregate into very big colonies like a Bracken Cave where we put 20 million in a single cave, they're exceedingly vulnerable to people who misunderstand and then intensely fear and persecute them. And it's because of this type of thing combined with habitat loss and other factors that bat populations today rank among the most endangered animals on the face of our planet. And that's why I founded Bat Conservation International. Conservation is too often about pretty cute glamour species. Many bats are pretty and cute. But one thing I can tell you for sure is that bats, whether they're pretty or ugly, are very important. They're allies. They're nothing to be feared. Bat going to attack me in my yard? Exceedingly unlikely. You are more than 20 times more likely to be killed by a dog than you are to be harmed by a bat. You are 10,000 more times likely to die at the hands of your own spouse. I hate to mention that, but uh, when you put life in perspective, bats don't rank on the scale of dangerous threats to us. On the other hand, simply learning to live in harmony with bats, all we have to do is learn to leave them alone. If you find a sick one on the ground, don't try to pick it up and handle it. Respect their values, and they'll return the favors. They're essential to a healthy balance of nature. They're essential to our economies. They're essential to us, and that's why I'd like to invite you to check out our website, get a backyard bat house or build one. We have the instructions on our website as well as, as houses that you can buy ready-made. Or even better, join Bat Conservation International. We publish a really beautiful full-color magazine about bats of the world. If what I've just told you interests you, then you need to join because there's a whole lot more to learn and there's a whole lot of bats out there that are in need.